Oh, we're on. Hello. Well, and we'll give it 10 seconds to the audio. To No, we, we can't because the audio is all over the place. You are on audio anyway. So I do big hello again. Are you going to edit it to this point? Yeah, we'll edit it to this point. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> hello, guys, and welcome to Gander Brewing, the only place you can watch it and taste it. I've got Lee with me this time. Uh, yes, I'm here. I'm glad I'm he's in. here because he's going to help us with... It is Andy, isn't it? It is Andy, yes. From right. Lalamond. Yes, Lalamond. Who did a fantastic speech yesterday. We sat enthralled. I'm bad. I was, I was actually, I did a speech beforehand and I was, sort of my nerves were coming down. Again, I found that quite nerve wracking. I'm sorry. Ah, that's all right. You didn't miss too much. Don't worry. Yeah. But yeah, we sat enthralled. Hello to Sam. Hello to Sam. He brought the baby. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a pram. We've got a pram, pram and Sam. We've got a pram and Missing a baby, though. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Pram, but no baby. Look at this, uh, the baby. That's a long story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Please go on. This is funny. Um, I would just like to say that this is really cool. I feel like I can wear it as a bag. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's quite light, too. It is lightweight. It might yeah. be easier to push it because it's got wheels. Yeah, but I don't have anything to put in it. Because uh, okay. the baby. Baby's Baby's got beer. You can put some. You can put some beer in it. Put some beer in it. Push it around. <laughs> yeah. Like an ice cream truck, but a beer pram. <laughs> what an idea! That's, that's Where did the ice cream truck go? We had an ice cream truck yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so, as you can tell, very lots of things happening at Brewcon. <laughs> People coming in and out, but we're here to talk about yeast. Yeah. And bacteria. Don't forget bacteria. And yes, bacteria. And the sour pitch. Really interested in the sour pitch. But nice. Yeah. So. Would you like to give us a sneak or a, like a recap of the speech yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that'd be awesome. Yes. We start with sour. So, so, so sour pitch is a, a Lactobacillus plantarum bacteria, yeah. um, which we originally isolated from our wine division, where it has a different purpose entirely to what we're going to cool. use it for in brewing. Uh, but in brewing, we use it for making sour beers primarily by kettle sour. Yeah. So you run your wort off into the kettle, and then usually, actually, you boil it for five minutes just to sterilise it first, and then you cool it down to. 35 to 40 degrees, pitch your bacteria and let it sour over 24 to 48 hours. Yeah. And during that time, you're creating lactic acid, so you're producing acidity, so that's where your sourness is going to come from. Um, you also produce a bit of flavor as well. Yeah. Uh, and then you would boil it as you would normally. So what that's, that, that's doing is uh, killing that bacteria, right? So at that point, there's no more bacteria there. It's all dead. You're basically back to a clean brew again. Yeah. Add your hops, cool, go into your fermenter, ferment as normal. Um, and it's really quite an easy and safe way of making a sour beer, right? It is, um, yeah. And actually, um, you know, it kind of sounds modern and innovative, but uh, this is something that kind of the uh, Berliner Weiss breweries were doing 100 years ago as well, so it's not oh, wow. as new as maybe it sounds, it's just that with the people that brought it back and made it popular for, for home brewers and, and commercial yeah. brewers like. And that was an interesting statistic, you say 90% of the sort of UK or world's craft brewers that are producing cat sour is actually used as sour pitch. Did I say yeah. that number? I'm sure that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't you, Don't but... quote me on that. <laughs> but it's, no, it's been very good for us. It's, it's been really popular. Yeah. Um, and it's a great... I think it's the only dried product out there. Yeah. So which again, we were talking about liquid and dry yeast yesterday. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. I was talking, um, we were talking about hops and uh, leaf compared to pellets. What about wet compared to dry yeast? Because I think so a lot got, of homebrewers think that yeah, wet yeast is... It's a funny one, really, because I think dried yeast historically has had quite a bad reputation. Um, so if you read brewing books from 20 years ago, uh, dried yeast will be kind of... People tell you it's inferior, it's bad quality, uh, but those books are out of date. You know, this is something that probably was true back then, um, but it's changed, and because the books haven't changed, people are still kind of going down that line, that's what they believe. Um, but in actual fact, dried yeast, one of the reasons it's better is it has a very long shelf life. So it's stable for three years. And during those three years, if you want to do a lot of quality control, so if you wanted to hold it for six months and test everything you possibly could, do a real deep dive, you could, and you'd still be able to sell it, and it wouldn't be a problem. Um, whereas wet yeast, as soon as you packaged it, it's going to start deteriorating, no matter what you do. Um, even if you refrigerate it and keep it correctly, it's still going to be going off in its uh, health and viability. Hmm. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, that for me is the biggest kind of winner with it. But there's a whole different kind of, you know, you can do the pros and cons. Um, and I personally like dry juice, but, you know, some people like to use wet. And I, you know, I wouldn't want to, like, 
Of course, I'm not putting yeah, it either yeah. way, but I, I personally, my preference would be dry. Well, yeah. Dry can be a lot easier on brew day as well. Of course, yeah. I mean, you know, you just sprinkle it on top. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, uh, there's no need for a starter. You don't need to like put it on a stir plate or anything like that. You just sprinkle it on yeah. top and it's good to go. What about rehydrating it? Is that. So, rehydrating is an interesting one, actually. Um, and I'm glad you asked um, because all our packs at the moment say that you should rehydrate. Um, and recently there's been quite a lot of talk in the industry about whether you should or you shouldn't and if you go to a lot of smaller commercial breweries what you'll find is that they don't they just chuck it in and that's kind of because it's more practical that way if you think if you're brewing I don't know 5,000 hectolitres and you've got uh, 5 kilos of yeast the recommendation is that you rehydrate in 10 times its rate in water and suddenly that becomes a very big bucket right Yeah. Uh, and it becomes a lot easier just to throw it in um, so we found a lot of breweries were doing that and they said it worked so um, we've done a lot of tests in the lab um, looking at whether you should or you shouldn't rehydrate and what we find is that the difference is small uh, and it's variable between strains so some strains prefer to be rehydrated some prefer not to be rehydrated but actually the difference between the two is almost nothing um, so my advice would be do what you do and if you think it works and you're happy with it, continue doing it that way. When you're doing those tests and you're finding out the difference between, you know, which likes it and doesn't, what are you measuring? Is it viable yeast count after a certain amount of time? Or? So it's a whole swing of different things. So one of them will be uh, viable yeast, um, but we'll also look at fermentation, so trial fermentation. So you'll look at them and see how long they are, uh, what degree of attenuation you get, uh, the flavours that produce. So not just viability, uh, like the whole kind of swathe of different things that can be affected or could be affected. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, measuring viability on dry yeast is an interesting one as well because uh, the drying process kind of crystallizes the, the cell walls. So if you do a standard viability test using a microscope and methylene blue, if you were to look at dry yeast under the microscope, you'd find quite a lot of blue cells. Um, so really the best way to do it with dry yeast is to plate it. So you get a, a plate count rather than a, a magnified kind of okay. uh, yeah, count of viable yeast. And what do you mean by plate count? So you'll take a known weight of yeast, right? You'll rehydrate it in water and then you'll dilute it okay. down to a certain level. And then you'll plate that on an agar plate that you'd use for detecting yeast or bacteria. Okay. And then you count the number of cells that you got from that dilution, work back up to your original dilution and then up to your weight and give you a live cell count per gram. So it's... Uh, there you go. Yeah, that's Luke the, best, that. that's the yeah, best, best way to do it. That, if you're yeah. do it. Um, My other brother works at a lab and he does a lot of plate counts. I'm sure. it's, yeah. I mean, to be honest, it's a at home it's not actually that hard yeah um it's probably more like effort rather than I difficulty so, yeah. you know it's like a lot of work but yeah a bit of confidence as well though but if we hear from you that you know you can do it at home that's probably goes a long yeah, way yeah i mean actually. yeah of course i mean you probably need a certain amount of kind of knowledge of microbiology but if you were to look at the you know the yeast book the brewing elements yeast book that has a, like a little section on how to create your own yeast lab and it's yeast actually book. we must good. link that yeah, you're listening it, there, it, Chris. It is good. The brewing um, elements have like listening. a whole range. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for me, like there's there's one for every ingredient, right? So there's malt, water, hops, yeast. Is that all of them? I'm missing something. Malt, water, hops, yeast. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, Maybe we were supposed to fill in the rest. <laughs> I was going to say time, but we missing yeah, time, time, yeah. <laughs> Love. Love. And it goes from like Beards. basic all the way up to, to complicated. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's worth checking it out. Yeah, definitely. We'll link those we've in the description to this video, yeah. Yeah, there's a few really good recommendations come to BrewCon that we've got. I know I was looking at the Scott Janice Hops book, not related to yeast, but that is something that's been recommended to us. William from Simply Hops we had on doing an interview. Did you we, call him William? Wow. Yes. We had his business card. <laughs> we had his business card where he says William. What's he go by? Bill? Will. 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 Yeah. William. William. <laughs> we'll call him William from now on. I think I might still him calling him William as well. William. <laughs> well, he did see me. I said to him, how are you doing today, William? He went moist. It's <laughs> <laughs> quite hot here at Brucon. It's always like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> the word's banned, isn't it? Is that moist. Banned? No, yeah. A lot of people don't like that word. Yeah. No, I quite like well, it. For that reason. Those, what, what are those Maybe things over your mouth? Loop for a bit. What, moist, what moist, like moist, a, moist. a pixelated <laughs> mouth? Yeah. Every time I say moist. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So what, happens, what else is happening in the world of yeast? Uh, all sorts. So um, we aim to try and bring two strains to the market here. Um, which is quite tricky actually. Um, we're only a small team, the brewing division of Lalaman, so you're probably talking less than 100 people all in, um, including production and uh, quality control, technical support, sales. So it's, it's a small team, so it's quite tough to bring these to the market quickly. Um, but we're looking at uh, another kind of New England style strain. Um, okay. So we already have one, um, but it's quite uh, flocculent. 
mm. and some people are looking for a less fluctuant strain, so we might look at doing a, a less fluctuant one. Um, and then there's been rumours of potential looking at maybe doing a Veek strain. Um, so we've had samples of Veek uh, in the lab for probably about two years now, looking at uh, whether we can bring a product to market. Um, obviously, they're renowned for their ability to ferment hot without producing any off flavours and produce kind of an interesting kind of orange character as well. Um, so that's something that we'll probably look at. Um, and then we might look at a Brett strain, maybe. Um, it's another, it's, another bug, bacteria. Yeah, so it's a different species of yeast. There's a yeast, but it's a different species. Um, actually, the British fungus, Brettanomyces. Um, so it used to be found in kind of uh, barrel-aged beers or like spontaneous fermentations, uh, specifically in Belgium, but also in the old kind of English style ales as well. So, so it's a fungus. It's it's well, yeast is a fungus too. Oh, okay. uh, they're, they're both they're the single cells fungus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. There's me, actually, the brewer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need to get to you your know, lab, brewing. actually, if we were. If, where is your lab actually? So Lalama has sites all over the world, right? So yeah. um, the brewing lab uh, is in Montreal, um, Canada, um, okay. which is where the company is headquartered. Uh, but we also have a production site in Vienna where we do a bit of kind of lab work there as well. And then we do quite a lot of uh, processate stuff, so enzymes and findings for, for the larger breweries. Um, and they've got a lab in uh, AB Vickers in, in Burton on Trent, so that's our UK uh, lab for brewing stuff. Um, there's also a big um, baking and whiskey yeast plant in Felixstowe, so that's, um, it's awesome. uh, we've got quite a lot of sites. Yeah. Would we be allowed to record in there? Uh, maybe if speak, we get over to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We have actually done filming recently in, in Vienna. Cool. So possibly. Possibly. Yeah. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Road trip to Vienna. Nice. Yeah, it would be. But you Lovely were talking. City actually is. Yeah. yeah. We were Very talking nice. yesterday about co-fermentations using different amounts of dried yeast for fermentation mm. to. As a, if you were a brewer, alter certain char characteristics. Yep. So co-fermentation is using two yeasts in the or same three. fermentation, or three. Or yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, you, there's really no limit to the number that you could use, but you'd probably be, you know, there'd be appreciating gains for using more and more and more. Mm -hmm. um, but it's basically using different uh, yeast strains to get different uh, characteristics. So if you wanted to have the characteristic <laughs> of one yeast, but also have the maybe attenuation uh, limits of another, then you could use those two at the same time just to produce that, that result. So and the classic is Windsor and uh, BRY97, which is our West Coast ale strain, to produce a beer that's um, kind of fruity with a New England style character, but also uh, attenuates to the same level that a regular IPA would, rather than stopping a little bit high, which the uh, kind of traditional English strains can, so Windsor and ESB tend to stop a little bit high. Mm, if um, it does stop high, it increases the sweetness of the beer. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So the, the, the uh, chemical, it is a chemical, but the sugar we're talking about is uh, maltotriose, so um, brewery fermentation, you have glucose, you have maltose, which is two glucoses stuck together, and then you have maltotriose, which is three glucoses stuck together, and some yeast strains will ferment all three, and some will only do glucose and, and maltose, and then actually some will only do glucose as well, so... Um, there's some wine strains that won't even ferment the, the malto sugar, so really? they wouldn't really be very good for brewing, unless okay. you would maybe try to do low alcohol beers, which is something that we are playing with a little bit at the moment. Wow, okay. I love that slide in the presentation, actually, with the explanation of the... Uh, of the sugars? Of the sugars. Jack, a bit of a chemist, was loving wow. your the, uh, the explanation <laughs> of functional <laughs> groups <laughs> with the esters. Well, oh, yeah, A-level yeah, chemistry is more understanding than, than I've got, but I definitely appreciated that graphic with the picture of the sugars. I actually uh, did a, so I did kind of like a lot of sensory days with people, so I'll go to breweries and I'll spike beers with different chemicals and I'll talk about the flavours that are produced. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> does sound dodgy, I'll okay. yeah. <laughs> It's Jack giggling away in the background. You've got an image of him going What's around. That a bit of yeah. <laughs> yeah, There's a bit of LSD. <laughs> yeah. So you're spiking it with sugar, are right? you? one of those in. Yeah. Uh, uh, lactic acid, uh, hop acids, um, butyric acid, which is uh, an off flavor that you get, um, which From is like into oh. baby sick. Yeah. Lovely. Oh, yeah. That was a lacto. There's. Oh, I'm talking about like podcast again here, but I know a lot of lactobacillus strains or like kettle sour beers Some struggle with. It. Yeah. Butyric acid. Yeah. Actually, is a this chemical has got quite a funny history in that uh, Hershey's chocolate in the states really? has got a very pronounced butyric acid flavour wow. and the reason is because they used to have to ship it all the way across the states to the plant that made the chocolate and by the time it got there it had gone off really? so the chocolate always had this butyric taint and then when they invented refrigeration people were so conditioned to having that taint that they still wanted it in there so they had to produce chocolate with butyric acid wow so you still have it now? yeah ah. yeah yeah, Hershey's tastes like baby sick. You yeah. heard it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
that's really interesting. I can't remember what we were talking about. It was chemicals. Sensory. Chemicals. Yeah, Function sen groups. I was saying, yeah, no, I, I did these talks for some reason, and sometimes I bring models of the chemicals along, which is it's really nerdy. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, my colleague, laughed at me. Yeah, yeah. Was it called Molly Mod? Yeah, 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 Molly Mod. So yeah, I've got some Molly Mod um, flavors that I take with me sometimes and pass around. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this reminds me of a captain I had, um, obviously in the navy. He used to come along with models of the ships, <laughs> and he used to put them on the table and say, "Right, we're going to be here, and you're going to be there, and all of this bits and pieces." Uh, <laughs> Blast the past. There. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the, um, when he ran out of the ships, that he's like. Like Let's be careful what I say here because yeah, I'm just going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, we did. We were, in the, we were doing some filming earlier. We are at Northern Monk, so we, we did it. We were very kindly allowed to go with around the brewery. They were doing a brewery talk, and the the tour guide was stating how much brewing is an equal mix of science and passion and art, really, and how you can you manipulate the chemicals, the scientific aspect of brewing to make something that is ultimately enjoyed and mm. celebrated all up and down the UK. So I thought that was quite pronounced and I thought I'd share that with you and everyone's going, listen to this flipping wet yeah, flannel just, talking yeah. about. <laughs> I was going to jump in and save you, but then I thought, no, this is... No, no, I I you know, like it's often described as being kind of part science and part art um, of which the other thing that i know is described like that is, is medicine so yeah. maybe with doctors maybe maybe be a doctor yeah. <laughs> doctors for the soul yeah. and the mind <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a good time everyone feels that. a little bit happier after a pint don't they they do that's yeah naughty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we have got some. We have got some art in the brew. We've got to mention actually on any of our videos that we've got some art from our local artiste who came on yeah. a set of time on our Mario Kart yeah. track. You'll yeah, have to come and visit. The, uh, things that look like gold bars and bits of coal. Ah, that's our wax. So we waxed up all of our bottles. So we melt that in our uh, okay. little power. You know. It's, do you want to grab a bottle? Oh, okay, yeah. Too, yeah. I, I did judging yesterday when we were cursing you guys. Oh, because you couldn't really? get the bottle top off. We couldn't open it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little tab there. I thought we yeah. broke you off for that reason. Really? Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we explained it, and we'll, we'll explain it again, but we live stream everything from start to finish. So we take all of our raw ingredients and we live stream it on the brew day all the way through until it's bottled and then sent to the door. So for us, it's all about showcasing exactly how beer is produced, opening up that back door end. Careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but and then trying to, you know, talk. It's a cool concept though, I like that. So people watch and they see the whole process and then you send it to them as well. Yeah, yeah you can get it straight to yeah, the door. So that's why we were talking about sour pitch because I really want to... And not just one of the actual beers that were brewed and bottled because they're numbered, aren't they? So yeah. you can, if you join us and you want, we could, we'll name the bottle live for you and then it comes out. To yeah. yeah, great. That's really good. Mm, so I'll, be I'll, really... I'll send you some sour pitch and you yes, can play with it. Absolutely. Yes. One sour pitch. That's it, end video. <laughs> <laughs> so, shall we go into Berlin Advice? Should we start with the Berlin Advice? You say that they were doing the kettle souring. I quite like Berlin Advice. I think, you know, it's quite uh, a... low hops, almost none probably. Um, yeah, it does you have can just to do be. it straight, or you can make it with some fruit. So, no, there's. Is yeah, it no, safe? These guys are this is what I want to know. Yes. When we talk about sours, a lot of people get worried about. Is it going to tank all of their equipment? And, that's exactly it. and in this case, the answer is no. Uh, with a caveat, you know, uh, <laughs> this is completely safe. This strain is safe. We've tested it. We know that it's very uh, susceptible to bitter acids from hops, so it will die if there's any hops there. Um, if you were to use other strains, it's possible that work hasn't been done. And uh, hop resistant uh, lactobacillus is uh, quite a common brewery contaminant. So if you were to use a hop resistant lactobacillus by accident, um, you get in with a problem. So um, a lot of people when they do uh, sours for the first time, maybe uh, look at using sour pitch or a product like that, but then decide that they're going to use yogurt. And you know, yogurt's quite a good source of lactobacillus. But you don't know what the strain is, and you don't know how tolerant it to hops it is. You don't know if it's going to be the same every time you use it. So, um, in big breweries, like one of the big things is consistency, right? If you've got a brand, you always want it to be the same. Hey, do you use yogurt? Yeah. Do you know that the bacteria they've used is always going to be the same? No. And what so, was the strain of the lactobacillus again? So it's Plantarum. Is Plantarum. Yeah. And there are other strains that you can get on the market as a home brew as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, you know, Plantarum 
is a, is a strain in itself, but there's different strains of Plantarum as well. So um, I think we tested two different strains of Plantarum when we did the initial development work for Sour Pitch. Um, and then we did one called Helveticus as well, which we're going to launch as a product, um, which sours at a slightly higher temperature and uses uh, pr- produce a bit more of a pronounced acidity. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be launching, I think, awesome time. I mean, talk about temperatures with the Sour Pitch, you recommend pasteurizing for a short amount of time, chilling down to about 35 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And then with the Helveticus, it would you maybe don't have to cool all of your work it's, down to. So it'd be going down to about 40 for the Helveticus. Okay. Yeah. So still dropping. But... Sounds like a sour beer is coming onto our range soon. What do you think about that, Jack? I'm happy. I kind of need to. I mean, between us, when we sit on the sofa, Lee loves sour beers, and we've always hated them. And we've come here, and we've been indoctrinated we have started strong word it's funny, I really like when it. I taste it's it and it turns my face inside out I'm <laughs> thinking I don't like this but, but I, just... you know, I think that's I don't think how it should be I think it should be soft acidity it should be there but it shouldn't be like punching in the face acidity balance mm, uh, yeah. Yeah. I said before I don't really like uh, Flanders Reds because they tend to be really powerful acidity food. there tends to be a bit of um, acetic okay. acidity there as well which is vinegar and I don't like that character um, it's correct for the style but it's just not for me yeah mm. and I think that's what's really interesting and in what we wanted to do as a concept as well it's, it's not just showing from start to finish but also talk about all beer in general there's masses of it there's so there is. many different types and what's really we were talking earlier about the sort of beer history in England how it transitioned from miles to bitters to lagers to now IPAs and pale ales yet yeah, all across the globe there are so many different styles things in South America using exotic fruits we've never even heard of and people are calling that a sort of style of beer and I think that's always find that odd how you know that does make me slightly wary (laughs) (laughs) sorry I had a curry last night (laughs) it wasn't quite no I was just saying as an adult man there there are fruits that exist on this planet that I've never heard of that's crazy I still haven't had jackfruit people make everything with jackfruit these days yeah they do a really nice jackfruit powder have they? Oh, maybe I should have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Have we covered everything with yeast? Or is there so. anything else? I could talk all day. Yeast and bacteria. Cider. Sorry. Yeast and bacteria. Yeah. About cider. You could, there's so cider. much content with just yeast that you could go on for hours. Do you do a lot of cider uh, so fermentation? Cider's interesting. It's um, It sort of falls between divisions in element, right? So cider is technically an apple wine. Yeah. Um, but we do work with big cider producers, um, especially on the processate side. Um, the yeast they use do tend to be Lallemand yeast. So, um, very popular one is EC Triple One Eight, which is used a lot in the cider world. Um, but conversely, the the Lalaman Brewing Division actually controls the home wine division as well. So the Onology, so wine division, doesn't control the home wine side, but it does control the cider side. Okay. But the, who actually controls the home cider side? I'm not sure. It's confusing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I uh, know we have some really good. Um, wine people and cold climates wine people as well so then we've got somebody who's based in Denmark and she does the cold climates wine so she does you know southern England and uh, Scandinavia and she's really good on cider knows oh, everything cool. so I'm not a cider expert I've made it in the past um, but if I had any questions I would just shoot them to her because she knows everything yeah. yeah it'd be interesting to see cider make a renaissance and sort of have the same sort of uh what, how would you call it craft beer is quite fashionable now it'd be interesting to see if cider got that same sort of love I think it, there's, there's a chance there's a chance <laughs> you know it's, it's funny because it's quite different from brewing in its process it's quite you know it's, it is wine making not brewing but it you know I think there's real potential there for people to do it it's, um, it's also a very different regulatory environment as well there's so a lot produce, less duty as well we can produce 7,000 litres for free no duty at all. You don't need to register your business. You can sell it out your garden. Right, that's it. We're starting to make it out. Welcome to Gander Cider Company. I had this idea. Right? My parents have apple trees in the garden. I was like, you know, I could get a 7,000 litre tank. And I could get a machine you stick your credit card into and it automatically dispenses a certain amount of cider. And I wouldn't even need to staff it. I think, oh. yeah, yeah. But then I was like, what do you do if a child turns up with yeah, a yeah, credit card and just yeah. buys a shed load of cider and gets drunk? There you go. Mm. Congratulate them, I suppose, on their room. Well, they should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very good friend of mine, Brad, who's been on the show. Brad, uh, Brad, yes. Says the very best cider that he's ever tried is on the side of an A road that says, like, cider here, <laughs> with an arrow pointing somewhere. He says, 
if I'm ever at home, if I see anything like that, that's where I go. Why not as well, you know? Yeah. You could try it. It's, it's not going to kill you. Yeah, definitely not. In fact, you know, the, <laughs> it depends how much it's probably a lot of love, <laughs> It's probably a lot of love, care and attention put into that side. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Possible. Possible. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I've done, I did 120 litres of cider. It took four of us uh, an afternoon kind of shaking trees and smashing apples and it was pretty fun. I'd definitely do it again. Yeah. Uh, the product we produced was not the best. No. Mm. But it's all about the, the journey there, isn't it? After two or three pints, you're fine anyway, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Taste buds die after two and three pints. <laughs> <laughs> probably one of this. <laughs> Strip your tongue. Well, Andrew, thank you for joining us. Yeah, no problem. It's been fun. Thank yeah. you. Cheers. We're taking awesome. a lot of your time now, but that's it. I think we're good. Right. Bye, guys. Thank you for Bye from Ganderbury. Bye from Lamont. See ya.